CATL in China, the world's biggest battery manufacturer, basically, they've got this new technology to prevent fires in, in you know electric vehicles and thermal runaway. It's really well thought out. It's really quite crazy. And I think it offers a no-nonsense approach to fixing that issue. And I think with the world being as, as weird and crazy and a bit crap as it is these days, I think that must be a bit of fresh air to hear that somewhere on Earth, someone is taking a no-nonsense approach at fixing something. It, it, it was for me when I learned this. And so basically, uh, they came up with their version 1, which is of this technology, which is just called NP 1.0 in 2020, and it uses aviation grade insulation between every single battery cell and water cooling that runs around the battery pack constantly, so that basically heat is always being extracted from the cells, and then each cell has an exhaust in it, in a sense. Uh, this is also to make sure that if one cell overheats, it doesn't spread to any other cell and it doesn't start a giant car fire. So, having one little cell in the car, like this big, on fire. That's not the biggest issue, but having the whole thing on fire, that is a different kettle of fish. So basically, um, what they've done is, uh, in the in the first iteration, is use this uh, insulation that's really, really good. And it really is good. I'm not sure if it's aerogel. It probably isn't aerogel, but it's something comparable, where it's really thin. I'll put a clip on screen. And you can get a, a blowtorch on it, on this side, and you won't feel it on the other side. It's still really thin. It's pretty great stuff. So in 2022, they released the next version called NP 2.0. It's quite predictable, isn't it? They introduced something called smoke electric isolation, uh, which I think I actually chuckled at when I learned that. And I think it, it sounded a bit like a, a crappy Chinese to English conversion. As you're, if you're, if anyone who looks on AliExpress, or, or I don't know, I don't use Teamu, but if you go on Teamu, you'll know what I mean. Uh, in the event of a thermal runaway event, anyway, in the cell, any high temperature gases or smoke basically just get vented out from underneath the battery cell and then into some like channels underneath to get it out of the battery pack. Uh, so in between the cells there's also a large flexible water cooled plate uh, literally touching the full surface of the cell to cool it down quickly. So if you imagine I've got nothing around me to do this, but basically if you imagine a, a blade cell from BYD, I'll put a picture on screen, and then imagine just slipping next to it a big a big thing that just sits flush against it as it produces the heat as the electrons move through the battery and there's, there's resistance and it gets warm basically or if there's actually a thermal runaway event and it's broken uh, from uh, dendrite formations inside which should not really be an issue I suppose with LFP chemistry it will, should get that heat out which will then stop it setting on fire and then spreading to the other cells basically that's the plan uh, so the next version of the thermal runaway the next version of thermal runaway is due to the next version of this NP te technology is due to come out in the next 12 months. Uh, combining this, I think, with LFP chemistry, which is already a brilliant chemistry and has a lot less dendrite formations and thermal runaway events, it's a really fantastic idea, I think. And, it, and I think obviously that's what they're doing. I think it should make the battery in an EV more safe than they already are now. Statistically, the truth is EVs are 20 times less likely to be involved in a a vehicle fire. I did a recent video on this and when you basically pull the data from the most credible sources that you can't argue with, such as fire departments, who would kind of, if they were bad, they would want to tell you they're bad, wouldn't they? Uh, basically, they even they, they state, statistically, it's not even comparable really to a petrol or diesel vehicle. Petrol and diesel vehicle, vehicles, a lot of fires. Hybrids, tons of fires. Uh, battery electric vehicles, very little. It's, it's like not many fires at all. Not to get anecdotal here, but it, here is a video of a Hyundai, I think it was. Hyundai, was it a Tucson? I can't remember. It was setting on fire on someone's driveway a few hours after it had been used, actually. And CATL just released and put into mass production their extremely high density battery cells that I made a video about at the beginning of the year, uh, which basically have almost double the capacity per kilo than Tesla's highest density cells. They're really making big jumps in the battery world now. Uh, I think now there's big money involved and an incentive to improve them because they can put them into the into the cars and sell them to the rest of the world, obviously. The Chinese state know this. This is why they've been apparently helping all these companies uh, by giving them support or something, whatever, which is apparently a criminal thing to do. Uh, so thank you for watching. I'm Ben Alexander, and I make these videos every day, almost every day. 
and uh, please consider subscribing or joining on YouTube members or Patreon. As I just recently said as well, uh, on YouTube memberships, I've just started doing some members only live streams. So you'll get access to those if you join. I think it's about two euros or five euros a month. And you'll also get access to special members only videos and also a funky little logo next to your name when you comment on things so that people know you're a follower. Which is Thank you for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you're interested in the uh, stuff that I'm talking about here. Electric cars, battery tech, stuff like that. Thank you for watching.